What's up, guys? We're at Compassion City Church again for Upper Room, and the speaker tonight is Nolan Clakely. Of course, everybody say hey to my cameraman, Victor. He's got shaky hands. Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy what he has to say, and I'll see you in a second. This is something that's been in my heart for a long time, and it's something I've had to deal with, and I think everyone in here has had to deal with it at one point in time. And I'm going to be in Luke 15. Now, tonight I'm going to tell you two stories. And both the stories are going to consider, I'm going to consider, uh, contain two brothers. The first story is about, is a story that Jesus told. <coughs> he tells a story about a father. He starts out talking about a father, and then he immediately talks about, he has two sons. And the first son really kind of took after the father. He wanted to stay home. He wanted to uh, farm the land. He wanted to be just like his dad. But the second son was different. In fact, the second son went up to his dad and said, hey, um, I want to uh, take what I'm going to get when you die. So he basically looks at his dad and says, my life's going to be better when you die, so can we just get through, just forego that process and just give me the money? And I was like, you know what, okay. That's what you want, yes. And he goes and he carries on about life and what uh, Jesus called, he says, ways of living. Now, imagine whatever you want to. And one of my best friends I haven't seen like three months has walked in and he expects not to do anything. Everybody give a round of applause. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. But, uh, for real though, in the story though, he goes away from the thing off, which Jesus says waste of living. And whatever waste of living it is to you, whether it be getting on drugs, drinking, whatever it may be, you just can picture him with someone like Vegas and he lived it up. He lived it up, and, by, and uh, Jesus doesn't give like a time. It, it may have been, he may go on for weeks, he may go on for months, maybe years. But it picks up, talking about how uh, he says um, he lost them. And then he's working for a guy, he's actually feeding livestock. And uh, he says, um, so they come to him and he says, my dad, my dad's servants have a better than me. My dad's servant actually had a really good day. And I'm over here, came to eat. So he says, you know what, I I'm going to bring up the best apology I can and go home. So as he's going home, I mean, like, and I'm just taking this in the way, I'm reading it in this context because I know how I would be. That I'm like, Casper, don't kill me, but I, I know how I would be that I would be like, I've been talking to myself the whole way trying to find the best apology, excuse, whatever it may be, for coming home. And as he gets to where his father can see him, his father does what at this time is unthinkable, especially for a wealthy man because he has servants. He gets up and he books it to his son. He gets up and he runs, and that's not something you do with this. Like, it is basically like if a man just, if someone just started just, I can't even, it's like if someone took their clothes off and started running. That's how, this, that's how that's viewed in society at that time. Like, why is this dude doing this? Especially, man, that's class, that statue. And nonetheless, he runs and he meets the son that I guarantee you, every servant, every person around there knows left him just to go to what you just think is Las Vegas and just waste a lot of money. And then, yeah, he, and by the time, I, I imagine the son sees him coming, he's like, why is he running? Then by the time he gets there, he's like, okay, dad, look. And then his dad doesn't even let him get a word in. He says, okay. Listen, one servant says, hey, I need you to go get a robe for this kid. He needs some more clothes. He stinks. There's another one. He says, hey, I need you to go fill the cat, kill the fat uh, calf because we're about to eat good tonight. And there's another one that says, hey, I need you to go down to the town so I can invite everyone and say, hey, dinner and drinks are on me. Just get back into my place. We're about to throw a party. And then he, and that's what he does. He celebrates the fact that his son has come home. The son can't even get a word in. He's like, well, okay, okay. If it goes no party, it's no party. But there was another person. Yeah, right. There was another one. And he, he wasn't quite like the father. You can go ahead and go that up track. I'm going to start verse 25 of Luke 15. It says, Now his older son was in the field, and as he, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dance. And he called one of the servants and asked, and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fat cat. And because he has received him back and safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go. And his father came out and entreated him. But he answered and says, look, these many years I have served you and never disobeyed your command. Yet you have gave me, you know, you never gave me a, like a young goat, which at that time was like worthless. That I might celebrate my family. But when this, notice he says, when this son of yours comes home, 
He doesn't even say his brother. He says, when this son of yours comes home. Not my brother, but when this, he, he completely says, I don't even claim it. When this son of yours comes home. Wait, I lost twice. Wow. Okay, there we go. But, <laughs> wow, this is embarrassing. <laughs>
they come home. The centerpieces come home. And then God starts blessing them. And God starts giving them things. And they, and they start seeing the, like, the fruit of labor that God has given them. And they're thinking, well, God, where's mine? Well, why, why can I not have that? And what they start doing, they start marginalizing them because, they just, because they're just so happy to be in their group. And what you do is that, sure, if you connect them all up, they, they actually connect. But there's no substance to the picture that it makes. It's just one huge, it's just a big hole. Yeah. And what they do, they're, they are completely comfortable because every single person is the same and they fit perfectly and they can't hold each other. And there is no one who is greater than the other because they can't because they're all they all feel the same. They all are in the same cloth because they're all good. But yet, they're the centerpieces. And they have, but without the board pieces, they have no structure. But the board pieces, they have what they start trying to piece things together. And we and we as Christians think, how in the world can someone claim to say they know Christ when they're doing all these things? In reality, it's probably because they have not had anyone accept them and want to lead them. So all they're trying to do is find different pieces that they can fit in. And we're saying, why are they trying to do this? Because they're just trying to see what works. They're trying to see what fits. Because they don't have anyone trying to show them structure. Wow. That you can use these little bags, you can call these things, you can call this jealousy. Because insecurities. What are you laughing at, Jess? Because I, I didn't say baggies. Is that what you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just no. You're speaking of me and Victor. It's okay. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, for real. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a roommate. Kidding. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you, you call these jealous. You can call these anything that's holding you back from actually connecting. With you. That's good. Because. They are living, they're having to just hope they can connect with the right one. And if you look at these puzzle pieces, how many, you, how many do you believe you can actually connect correctly without using the, a border piece? To me, I, I mean, that, and maybe you can, you're a genius, but I can't because I'm very simple minded. And yeah, <laughs> I'm right, I'm right. You're right. So, uh, <laughs> but how, how do we hold them accountable? For things that they're pushing them away from. See, and there, as I said, there's another story. I'm going to look at Genesis real quick. And this is actually the biggest, in my, from what I've read in the Bible, the biggest civil competition I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be between these two brothers. Their name is Jacob and Esau. So they're twins, actually. And from the time they were born, they came out of the womb racing. That Esau barely wins, and Jacob has a hold of his heel. Like that's 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 that was the race, and it never quit. That Esau was like Stinson, some jack athlete that you didn't want to mess with. And then you had like someone like me that was ja that was Jacob, and I had to like kind of all he wanted to do. Oh yeah. I tried to save you, but <laughs> but for real, and it continued on. To the point to one day that since Esau was first born, he had the birthright. He had the blessing coming his way. And one day, um, he comes home hungry and Jacob says, well, I made food, but unless you give me a birthright, you're, you're not going to get any. He says, okay, give me that. I want food. Then, not too long later, when their father Isaac, who's going to get the blessing, loses his sight, Jacob sneaks in there and takes the blessing from Esau. Esau gets so upset that he's wanting to kill him, and Jacob has to run. And through various other things throughout his life, Jacob, uh, he has, there comes a point where Jacob says, I have to come back home. I have to come back and see Esau. And this is the moment where he has, he has now has a family, he has kids, completely different than whenever he left. And now he has to come back to the last time he saw his person, he wanted to kill him. And no doubt Esau, he wanted to, he to kill Jacob in no time. And I'm going to start in verse, uh, I'm going to start in 33, uh, Jacob, Genesis 33. All right, guys, that was Nolan Clakely speaking tonight, and I hope you guys enjoyed as they learned something and, of course, you know, apply it to your life. If you want to, you can follow me at the Cast James. I upload pictures or little updates about these videos coming out. And also, you could like, comment, and subscribe on my YouTube channel and, you know, get notifications about uh, videos I upload like this, you know, somewhat weekly. Anyways, like I said, I'm Cast James, and I'll see you guys next time.